So I picked up two sheets of plywood today. I'll be building a laundry room pedestal for a front load washer and dryer. I found some great instructions in a handyman magazine. I'll make sure to link them down below in the description. And I will also link all the materials that I use as well. So let's get started. I marked on the plywood all of the pieces that I needed to cut, making them just slightly larger than they needed to be so that I could cut them down to the exact size when I needed them. And you can see I used the level um, as my guide so that my line would be straight. And I also use the table saw and the miter saw just to get all the boards cut the way the plan suggested. So I started with the toe kick since everything will be built upon this. And as you can see, I didn't have a whole lot of space to work. So I'm using the top of it uh, to work on. And that's why I'm using the parchment paper just to make sure that the glue doesn't stick to it. And you can see that I'm using the squares just all along all the time just to make sure that it stays nice and square. I don't want anything to be turned crooked because again, everything's gonna build on top of this. And I use clamps just to make sure everything held tight as I was putting in the, the screw and I pre-drilled all of the holes just to make sure that there wasn't any tear out. And of course, turning it all around and doing the same to the other side. Now with this, I made sure to glue all of it first because once that board's on, you're not gonna be able to pull it off to put the glue in later. You also might notice that my toe kick is just slightly smaller than what the plans call for. And I just modified mine a bit so that the washer and dryer wouldn't be up too high. So that's the nice thing about this plan is I found that you could modify it to your room or what you need. And now I'm putting on the sides to the back. And I used the toe kick just in here just to make sure that I'm getting it square and keeping it right. But I'm using the parchment paper because I'm not going to leave the toe kick in right now. I'm just using it as a guide and using it to help hold everything in place. I'm just using wood glue along the bottom and then putting in that toe kick. Now I'm making sure when I'm holding it in place here that it's not sticking out below the back or the sides, that it's exactly flush with them. And I'm using the clamps to hold it in place.
And now I just clamped this into place and put some dive weights on until the glue dried. I pre-marked where the dividers would go and then I measured out where I would put the screws. I pre-drilled them and put them right where the divider will go so that the divider will hide them. And I had to be careful to mark right where it would go through and go into the toe kick. I painted the hole inside, leaving a line where the dividers will go so that the glue will hold better. And with some help, put on the top. Once I made sure that all the sides were flush with the top, I pre-drilled and screwed. And I also had help just to make sure to hold it in place to make sure that on all areas, the sides and the back and the top all came together flush. And one of my batteries died right there on me. Luckily, I had a helper to help me out there. Always seems to go out of me, right in the middle of my project. To make sure that the dividers fit in nice and tight, I waited till this point to measure the exact measurements and cut them on the table saw. I used wood glue on three sides. And you can see it's a bit tight, which is just how I wanted it, but I did need help sliding it in there. And once I made sure that everything was square in there, I put two screws in the tops of both of them, one in the front and one in the back. These you will see in the top, but not when the washer dryer is on. Then I flipped it up on its side and carefully marked just where I needed to go through to get to the divider and held my breath just to make sure I got it in the right spot. Then I painted the hole inside. And here I am putting on the trim. Just making sure again that it's flush with the sides or the bottom top, just to make sure that it's not hanging over any edges. And I made sure to cut these as needed so they would fit in as flush as possible. I pre-marked where I wanted the inside trim to go just so that they were correctly spaced. Now this is something different that I did. I cut two wood pieces and I nailed them in in three different spots up on the top just to allow an area for me to nail to for the trim board on the top. Otherwise there wasn't really anywhere for me to nail it into to really hold it on there tight. And for the bottom piece, I fit that in and I drew a line right where I needed to cut it so that it would sit flush with the bottom. And again, this wasn't part of the plans either, but I decided to put in dowels to hold in that bottom board just to make it sit a little bit stronger.
once I got it to this point, I used wood filler on all of the holes. And I made the mistake of not doing wood filler on all of the edges before painting my first coat and it definitely needed it. So make sure that you put in wood filler on just all of the gaps everywhere on all of the seams so that when you paint, it'll look more flush. 